Hi guys, this is Russell. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be making an eye. So starting off with a UV sphere. Just changing the number of rings to 24. Tabbing into edit mode and selecting the center vertex as well as the first ring. Turning on proportional editing by pressing O or the button up at the top there. And then G and then Y and playing with the scroll wheel just to create a, a concave well here in the sphere. Uh, this is going to emulate the, the iris. Okay. So just getting so that that fourth ring doesn't move, selecting the center vertex and deleting, and then alt left click. I'm just going to resize what is going to be the pupil. Now with that ring selected, E and then Y to extrude back. And then F to create a face, and then I to inset that face. Okay, so up to the object menu on the left, we're gonna shade smooth, and then over to the modifier panel on the right, and we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Then tabbing into edit mode and control R to add some loops around the edges of our iris and the edges of the pupil. Okay, there you have it. You have the shape of the eye, general shape. Now we're going to go over to the UV editing tab. Tabbing into edit mode, we are going to select the edge of the pupil press Control E and then mark seam. We're going to do the same with the edge of the iris here. Alt left click and then Control E to mark seam. And then somewhere in the middle of the eye, you're going to do the same. Alt left click, Control E and then mark seam. A to select all and then U and then select unwrap. You should have something like this on the left. Pressing L to select all the connected vertices. These are just going to form what is the inside of the pupil or the inside of the eyeball. So we don't need too much resolution there. So I'm just scaling it down and putting it in the corner. Here these faces represent uh, what is going to be the front half of the eyeball. So we want some resolution there. I'm going to keep it fairly big. And these back ones, as you can see, are for the back of the eyeball that we'll probably never see, so I'm going to make them small. Now these faces are going to be what make up the iris, so I want the highest resolution here, so I'm going to scale up on the UV map as big as I can make it. Okay, so there we go. We have it all unwrapped. Over to the shading editor, we're going to create a new material. I'm going to call it eyeball and then back over to the Texture Painting tab. And then over on the right, we're going to see no textures here, but we're going to click that little plus button. I'm going to select Base Color. I'm going to up the resolution to 2048 by 2048. Press OK. And then over on the left here, you're going to pick from the drop down this newly created texture we called Eyeball Base Color. So there you have it. Selecting the Material Preview button over on the right, just so we can see as we paint. And then now we're going to pick a color. In this case, I'm just picking a, a brown to act as the base color of our iris. Over here on the right, um, you can under the palette, color palette, you can click new and then plus to keep that color just in case you need to reference it back. It could be handy. So picking that brown color, we're now going to paint on the UV map. And as you can see, as I paint on the UV map, over on the right on the actual model, you see the result. Here you can play with the fall off. Here I'm picking custom and pulling the graph into this shape here just to kind of soften things up. And you can see now when I paint, you get a softer 
more airbrush like feel. So now I'm just filling in the full circle. And you can see over on the right the entire iris is filled. Now I'm picking a slightly darker brown. And this I'm going to go around the edge of the iris. As uh, if you look at any reference pictures of an eye, uh, typically there's a darker ring around the edge of the iris. So there you have it. And now I'm picking a lighter brown than our base. And I'm going to create a, a sort of homegrown gradient by filling in the, the middle part here with the lighter brown. Just going around the edge here. Okay, so all the way around. I'm going to pick the darker brown again, and I'm going to go around the inner part of the iris to kind of create some more levels and, and interest in the iris. So there you have it. All the way around. A little bit of a gradient here, but it's got some harder edges. So we're going to go over to the smudge tool on the left. And now this will help us kind of mix the colors with each other. And I'm going to do it out in a radial fashion to kind of mimic that of an iris. Okay, over to the color palette and picking the original brown. I'm going to make the radius of the brush a little bit smaller this time. And again, going out in a radial fashion. I'm try to mimic that of what I see on an iris. I have some reference photos on another screen that you can't see. Okay, so went around like that. Now I'm picking another uh, darker brown, doing the same thing. Again, just to create levels, an iris is quite, quite detailed. So there you have it all the way around and filling in some darker kind of patches on the outer ring. Okay, and then now I'm going to change the uh, color method here basically to an overlay. And this was going to create some different effects. And using that same brown, you can see with the overlay, it uh, creates a nice kind of reddish brownish effect. Okay, now picking an even lighter brownish orange, smaller brush now. Don't forget to save. Um, if you do not save this image the next time and you close the file, next time you open it, it will not be there. So make sure you press Alt S or click on the image and then select save and save it to your hard drive somewhere. Okay, with overlay still picked, I've made the brush quite big and now I'm kind of adding some different effects here. I have a light brown. Doing some squiggly lines on the outside. I have blend, the blend mode set to add now. This creates a nice kind of light effect. Originally I was going for a more stylized look. And as you can see from the thumbnail, I tried to give it a go on a more realistic look. I don't know if I succeeded, but Okay, so here I am picking a greenish color. And with the blend mode set to color, it gives a nice kind of effect as well, some highlighting effects. Going around now on the edge, innermost pupil edge, I'm using that same green um, to highlight the the inner edge of the pupil as well. A 
Okay, so yeah, at this point, I've switched now the blend mode uh, to multiply. And I have it on the dark brown just to kind of take the edge off some of the brighter highlights I had. I, I thought they were maybe a little bit too bright. Okay, so at this point, I'm done with the iris for now. Switching over to these small faces that we scaled down earlier that make up the inside of the eye because I don't really need it to be uh, too detailed in there. Um, they're quite small and I'm just making them all black by painting them all black. And then here, this is what constitutes the outer front half of the eyeball. And what I want to do is kind of create um, a gradient kind of effect on the outside of the iris. If you look at any reference again, there's a kind of a soft, um, soft ring around the outside of the iris. Now I'm taking a reddish color and going around the outside of the eyeball here to give it some more interest. And then now with that same red color and scaling down the brush to very small, I am drawing some squiggly lines to uh, look like veins. Okay, so just more squiggly lines. Woohoo! Going all the way around. Depending on how grotesque you want the eye, you can do more or less. If you want it to be clean, you can leave this part out. You can leave it all white if you'd like. Going for a more cartoony look, you can leave all of this out. And... Okay. So that's looking okay for now. At this point, I decide maybe I want to add a little bit more detail to the iris. So I go back and with a small one or two pixel brush um, blend mode just on mix and a light brown color, I just start drawing squiggly lines all the way outside in a radial fashion. And then I do the same with uh, the black and the light brown. I start playing with some of the different blend modes, um, picking color. I think I did screen as well at some point, just to create some different levels and, and interest in the eye here. Lots of squiggly lines. You might get carpal tunnel here. But I thought it gave a, a good effect, um, something a little bit more realistic, but still stylized. Um, and so I, I thought it would be a fun way to kind of merge the two. Okay, so here you can see I just continue playing with different blend modes and different colors uh, to give the iris uh, the look that I want. Adding some of the green again. This is where the palette comes into, into play. And there you have it. I'm reasonably happy with the iris at this point. Saving again. And there you have it. Okay, so let's make a cornea or a the shiny part of the eye. So here I'm using the round cube, which is um, accessible through the built-in Blender add-on extra mesh objects. I can enable that in the preferences menu. So just adding a, a round cube here, 16 segments, and then just to kind of give it a little bit of a realistic touch, with proportional editing on, pressing O and then G and then Y and just playing with the scroll wheel, I'm going to pull the cube out a little bit just because that's how a cornea is roughly shaped. Then just adding shade smooth on there to make it smooth. Then going over to the shading editor and adding a glass node. 
and linking that up with the material output. And so in cycles, you should have a clear uh, sphere over the eyeball that we just painted. And just right here, because the I don't have any lights on, uh, lights in the file at this point, I add a HDRI very quickly. You can download those from HDR, hdrihaven.com. That's hard to say. And there you have it, a semi-realistic, stylized eyeball for you. Okay, well, I hope that helped. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.